All right. Good, more, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Tal Harias. I'm the procurement manager for the SNC-Laval and Nuclear Group. Uh, it really consists of two organizations within it. Some of you may know it as Can Do Energy, Inc., as well as SNC-Laval and Nuclear, Inc. Uh, they've been both integrated into one organization now, uh, which we like to call the SNC-Laval and Nuclear Group. Uh, I'll be t talking a little bit about the Canadian-Argentina nuclear co collaboration uh, that have been around for many, many years. Um, we'll start off with a little bit of an introduction about SNC Level and itself, and then we'll get into a little bit more specifics and as well as into supplier qualification. <clears throat> so SNC Level and is a world leader. It's a force around the world in engineering, procurement, and construction since 1911. Uh, today, the footprint is in all major engineering sectors, oil and gas, infrastructure, mining and metallurgy, and power across 50 countries worldwide. <clears throat> the SNC Lavalin Group itself, uh, as an overview, is one of the leading engineering and construction groups in the world and a key player in the ownership and management of infrastructure. Founded in 1911, SNC Lavalin is acknowledged for world class technical expertise and its services, including design, construction, project, and construction management, procurement, financial modeling, and operations and maintenance. From offices in over 50 countries worldwide, SNC Level is approximately 30,000 plus employees around the world provide EPC and EPCM services to clients in a variety of industry sectors, including oil and gas, mining and metallurgy, infrastructure and power. SNC has also combined these services with its financing and operations and maintenance capabilities to provide complete end-to-end -end project solutions. SNC has been active internationally for over 50 years, building a multicultural network and spans over five continents. <clears throat> SNC's team provides leading nuclear technology, products, and full-service solutions to nuclear utilities around the globe. Our team of 1,000 plus engineers, nuclear engineers, uh, procurement personnel, construction and project management experts offer customized operations and maintenance and plant life management services including waste management and decommissioning for water cooled PWRs, BWRs and PHWR reactor operators worldwide. This map shows you our footprint. So we have a candle reactor in Argentina, in Balsa, which is currently undergoing a life extension project. We also have 18 units in Ontario, Canada, and one unit in New Brunswick, Canada. In European markets, we have two units in Chernovoda, Romania, one in Pakistan, two in India, and two in China, which are the Chinsen plants, and then we have four reactors in Korea, which are the Wolsong plants. We also have new build opportunities around the world in the emerging markets. One is, again, in Argentina, which would be likely on the Atucha site. We have China and Romania. And the other new markets we're looking at and working with is Malaysia, Poland, and UK. In terms of our major projects and initiatives, some of the business lines that we have are life extension, as we talked about, and Balsa in Argentina. Darlington, four reactor units are actually currently going undergoing life extension as well, refurbishment in Ontario. And Bruce Power also announced the refurbishment of their reactor units as well. Long term, we have refurbishment opportunities with Volsong in Chinsen in China, and also Chernovoda, Romania. In terms of the new bells themselves, we're looking at Chernovoda units three and four, also looking at the AFCR, which would be in joint partnership with the China market, EC6 for the CANMOX uh, field in the United Kingdom, and then the fourth nuclear reactor new build in Argentina on Atucha. In terms of operations and maintenance services, uh, we have eight can-do utilities in Canada and abroad. We also do supply of safety and operational products to global nuclear industry. 
which would also include the pump seals as an example, primary heat transport seals. Other services and products that we offer are the decommissioning, decommissioning and waste management services, light water reactor services, and small modular reactor services. We have capabilities of engineering, nuclear engineering in-house and the expertise which we have in-house as well as with our partners, which we can provide all these services to different utilities, not just specific to CANDU, but to other nuclear reactors. In terms of the collaboration, the long history between Canada and Argentina, we have over 40 years of collaboration history for the delivery of economic, affordable, and low carbon electricity in our Argentina, which is from the Embalse Candu station. Argentina has invested heavily into the wa heavy water technology with the objective of localizing capabilities to services and refurbish the Embalse unit for future Candu new builds. Some of you may know or may not know, Argentina produces its own heavy water as well as the fuel in Argentina for the Candu reactors. Discussions for CAN-DO new build project started in 2007, and the life extension of Mbalse was signed in 2011. Uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, visited Argentina in November and uh, with the pr President Mauricio Macri. And then shortly after, the pre-project for the new build was signed, which we're currently working on. Several trade missions uh, have been organized in both countries through the collaboration of Argentinian and Canadian supply chains with strong embassy support. Uh, we are part of the OCNI trade mission right now, which is happening this week, uh, visiting many Argentinian suppliers and looking at their capabilities for future projects. <clears throat> in terms of an update on the Embalse station, in 1974, ACL began the construction of the Embalse Candu plant. It's uh, located about 100 kilometers southwest of Cordoba. Uh, it's a 648 megawatt reactor, and it has a capacity factor of 81.4% since in service, which is prior to refurbishment. As all candy reactors in Balsa is a pressurized heavy water reactor, it uses natural uranium fuel, heavy water coolant, and heavy <coughs> water moderator. Uh, NASA is leading the entire refurbishment project itself with support from SNC-Lavalin. Uh, it's a, it has a very high level of Argentinian supplier engagement. Um, ACL qualifier, or can do qualified many of the suppliers over here, primarily one of them, uh, to do pr a lot of the major reactor components. So the calendar tubes, the pressure tubes, the closure plugs, the shield plugs, and many other components are actually being done in Argentina. So projects includes, like I said, the replacement of pressure tubes, calendar tubes, as well as the steam generators as well, which were also have been done within Argentina. Um, additional enhancements to the plants are also being implemented for a better, safer uh, reactor. The unit was shut down in 2015 and is expected back online sometime in 2018. Now in terms of the fourth nuclear reactor in Argentina, which will be the, the new build project, which is being discussed right now. Uh, it's, it's basically an enhanced CANDU-6 unit uh, for the new build between CANDU Energy, CNNC, which is the Chinese partnership, and NASA. Uh, the project is for a single unit CANDU station, and SNC-Lavalin will primarily be supporting the procurement of it and the engineering for the NSP. The pre-project agreement was signed in November 2016 and project work is expected to begin 2017. Just a little cutaway for you guys to see the EC6 cutaway. It basically has enhanced containment and better safety systems along with other seismic upgrades. The plant site itself will be on a Tucha site, which is in the Zarate, Lima region, and it's about 100 kilometers northeast of Buenos Aires. Now I'll discuss a little bit about supplier qualifications. 
in terms of how you can become a qualified supplier for SNC-Lavalin nuclear, because we will be doing procurement for a good part of the reactor itself. So we'll go through it in three different stages. We have QA program qualification implementation, the design piece of it, and the supplier's capability survey. In terms of the QA program implementation, we, engineering and quality assurance verifies that the supplier's QA program are in compliance with the codes and standards required for that particular product, such as ISO, ASME, CSA, if that's required. But for your knowledge, the new build will be built on American codes and standards, which would be the ASME standards. So we review the supplier's current certificates, the QA manual initial capability survey, and then we finally perform the audit itself prior to award of the contract. Some of the aspects we look at in terms of the supplier's capabilities are their plant size, the layout, the location, the staffing levels, their qualifications, uh, the product lines they're currently doing, what kind of specialty areas they have in terms of precision machining or any specific operations, their designing capabilities, their manufacturing capabilities, uh, inspection and test capabilities, if they have a clean room, if that's required or not. Uh, packaging, handling, storing, and shipping capabilities, which are critical to some of our components. Commercial and financially, they should be sound. And supplier subcontracts, QA programs are reviewed and audited if required. So can do energy focuses or SNC level and nuclear focuses heavily on the supplier's QA programs and how they implement that program to their subcontractors. And if it's our discretion, if we want to audit them as well, to maintain the quality of the product. Most importantly, we also look at the capacity factor of the suppliers as well, to make sure that they will be within our project time frame. The initial survey for the suppliers, it includes the visitor of the supplier's facility by our technical experts, as well as engineering and QA experts. Uh, request of the review of initial data which we go through, supplier of, conduct a supplier capability survey, um, and then finally an audit as needed. That's all I had for you guys today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes, one question from my, one question from my side is uh, how do you secure the knowledge? Because HCL, it's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Lavalin is not the one that has normally the experience in the reactor. And we are suffering on a lot of pieces uh, in our business uh, that people, the, the know-how is people are going to retire, how, how we can capture this. And this, I think, is key if you want to keep in that business. Uh, do you have a special program? to bring back the retired one or, or, or what, <laughs> what, how are you dealing with this? Because nuclear is a lot with experience. So we need the old, old guys back on board just to secure what we did in Argentina with a Tucha 2 from Siemens side also. Huh? So, so what, what, what is your program and how you master this? Thank you. Very good question. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge which we have and we have found quite a few different strategies in order to uh, mitigate them the risks around engineering. So first and foremost is because Candu Energy took on the commercial reactor side of the business from ACL back in 2011. Um, so when the divestiture happened, we have all the engineers that are the designers of the reactor itself. Not necessarily the scientists behind it, but we have the designers. And we have most of the senior designers in-house. Um, as much as the industry has gone through a little bit of uh, shrinkage, if you will, um, we have lost uh, the younger ones versus the older ones, let's put it that way. Uh, so we do have the capabilities of those. At the same time, we are also looking at partnerships and ventures with some of our competitors as well in terms of the resourcing. Uh, so we can actually <coughs> utilize their resources as well for our project's benefit. So, and at the same time, if need be, to go out to some of the retirees as well. But primarily, we'll start in-house and then move towards the other, um, other, other individuals that are still employed in the market. 
um, in terms of on contracts, and then we'll move towards the third option as well. Thank you. Uh, it was interesting that you put up there uh, some of the uh, quality requirements that you're going to do to uh, ASME for a candy reactor. Um, I was just wondering if you could give some more background on why you decided to go ASME route versus the candy, which has already been established for this design. So when we looked at uh, the QA requirements, that's primarily driven by the client, which would be the Argentinian client, NASA itself. And there are more suppliers in the market, in the global marketplace, which actually utilize the American codes and standards compared to necessarily the TSSA standard, which would be the N285 equivalent to your ASME highest grade standards. So for somebody, for a, a lot more suppliers are qualified under the ASME program, which opens up the supply base. Right. And, and my, my follow-up question with that is, would you find that, you know, ASME um, particularly written for a um, large light water reactors, and I believe that your, your design is a heavy water reactor. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, issues within the delta when it comes to the design considerations in order to design that in accordance with ASME standards, or is that something that you're currently looking at now? Well, actually, even, till, even today, we actually have reconciled the, the slight differences between the CSA N285 versus the ASME N stamp. So there are minor differences in there which we have reconciled to the point where we do procure against some ASME codes and standards for the clients today. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Tala, great presentation. Um, um, I guess a two-part question. One is how big is your established Argentinian supply base already? And then the second is how do you balance, how does SNC-Lavalin nuclear balance between uh, use of Canadian suppliers versus uh, in-country suppliers? Okay. So the first question was, how do we utilize the Argentinian suppliers? No, uh, how big is your supply base already in, in Argentina? Sorry, okay. Um, so we do have, uh, it's relatively not as big as we would like it to be, um, but we have one supplier which is qualified almost to the end stamp, and we qualified them, it took years to qualify them to produce the pressure tubes, the calandra tubes. Um, there's been a lot of effort that's been put into it, and, this, and the supplier's done a tremendous job on the embalser refurbishment product itself. Um, so we will rely heavily on them, if need be, uh, to localize the product, as well as we've been m meeting with a lot of suppliers during this week, during the trade mission, uh, and looking at their capabilities, initial capabilities, and to see how we can localize some of the products within here. So we will naturally send our own auditors, uh, as required, to expand the supply base in Argentina for the Kendra reactor itself. And the other benefit that the suppliers are looking at is because it's uh, ASME codes and standards, uh, it's not specific just to the can-do or the Canadian market itself, so they don't need to worry about the CSA, um, so which will be more applicable for them to do the work for any reactor on the American codes and standards. Um, so second part of the question was in terms of localization. We are looking at, um, like I said, if we can expand the supply chain globally we will, um, in terms of if we really have to stick with a Canadian supplier for certain reasons in terms of the product itself or how much involvement is required by our, our own technical and QA teams, uh, we will focus on that as well to see if we can utilize Canadian supply chain or if we can go outside. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about becoming, it's a competitive market and we want to remain competitive. Uh, so localization is a good aspect of it, but not necessarily something that's going to hinder the project. So no questions? So Just very quick question. Where is there? That's a very good question. Fabrizio, you want to help me out? <laughs> I have no idea. Somewhere really uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it seems very nice. Next time I'll put a picture of Toronto. In